Hi everyone. Now I am going to discuss about the migration in birds. So the migrate reaction the, in birds will be discussed. First, what is migration? The migration is the periodic movement or the periodic traveling of the birds from one place to the other and return back to their original place for the purpose of breeding or feeding or getting a suitable environmental condition is called migration. Migration is of two types. One is the e-migration and other one is the immigration. E-migration. E-migration means the outward migration or the outward movement from the feeding ground to the breeding ground. The outward movement of the birds from the feeding ground to the breeding ground is called e-migration. And the immigration, it is the inward migration from the breeding ground to the feeding ground. The birds are returning from the breeding ground to the feeding ground is called immigration. The causes of migration, which induces the migrations are uh, called the causes. The causes, first one is the ripening of the gonads. When the gonads uh, became mature means, it will induce the birds to migrate. So the ripening of the gonads also one of the cause for the migration. The next one is the instinct, their inherent ability, their instinct. It will induce the birds to migrate from the feeding ground to the breeding ground and the breeding ground to the feeding ground, vice versa. Next, uh, scarcity of food also induces the birds to migrate uh, from one of feeding places to the other place because when the food became shorten or when the food became uh, their availability is less means they will migrate to the for the searching of the food to other places and the falling in of temperature that is the changes in the temperature also induces the birds to migrate from one place to the other and the shortening of the daylight also causes the birds to migrate from the place for the searching of the light Next is the types of migration. The migration is of uh, different types uh, based on the direction where, from where the uh, fish, uh, birds are uh, moving or the time. First one is the latitudinal migration. Uh, this type of migration is from uh, north to the south direction or from the south to north direction. And next one is the longitudinal migration. In longitudinal migration, uh, the birds will migrate from uh, east to west or uh, west to east direction. In altitudinal migration, the birds will move from the mountain top to the valley or from valley to the mountain top. Or, uh, the next is the total migration. In case of uh, total migration, uh, all the birds in a particular species will migrate uh, from one place to the other. Uh, that is uh, referred as the total migration. And in contrast to this uh, partial migration, in partial migration, only a few members in the group will migrate uh, from one place to the other. And next one is the diurnal migration. In diurnal migration, the migration will take place in, during the daytime. And in nocturnal migration, it is in contrast to the uh, diurnal migration, it will take place uh, during the night time only. So uh, it is called a nocturnal migration. And next one is the daily migration. In daily migration, the birds will uh, move from the nesting place to the feeding ground and return back to their nesting place at the evening itself. So daily they will migrate uh, for the searching of food that is referred as the daily migration. Uh, next one is the seasonal migration. So the birds will migrate seasonally, not uh, daily. They will migrate from one place to the other place only seasonally. When the seasonal changes, it will inducing the birds to migrate from one place to the other. 
first uh, we will see about the latitudinal migration in this case of migration the birds will migrate from north to the south direction or from the south to the north the north vice versa so this is called the latitudinal migration uh, some birds, uh, for example, American golden plovers uh, will pass uh, nine months of winter travel. They will travel along uh, 8,000 miles south in the plains of Argentina is a, a typical example for the latitudinal migration. And next is the Arctic tern. They will breed in the north uh, temperate zone and migrate to the Antarctic along both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. The next one is the cuckoo. They breed in uh, India. They will spend the summer at uh, Southeast Africa. And this covers a distance of about 7,250 kilometers. Next one is the longitudinal migration. In longitudinal migration, the birds will migrate from the east to the west or west to the east. In this direction, the birds will migrate. And this type of migration is called longitudinal migration. In longitudinal migration, some birds exhibit uh, this kind of migration. For example, starlings. Uh, it, they are the resident of uh, East Europe and West Asia, they will migrate towards the Atlantic coast. It is the best example for the longitudinal migration. And next one is the California gulls. Uh, they are the resident and breed in the Utah and migrate westwards to the winter in the Pacific coast. So it is also one of the example for uh, longitudinal migration. So the, in longitudinal migration, the birds will migrate from east to the west and vice versa. Next to type is the altitudinal migration. In case of altitudinal migration, the birds will migrate from the mountain top to the valley or from the valley to the mountain top. It, is, it takes place in a vertical direction. So the altitudinal migration is also called a vertical migration from the high mountains in the summer to the low valleys in the winter, which occur in many Indian and foreign mountaineer birds. In India, a large number of species uh, during the summer season migrate uh, from the plains uh, to the slopes of uh, Himalayas, ascending thousands of feet above the sea level, and return to the plain on the commencement of the winter. For example, common woodcock is exhibiting the altitudinal type of migration. They will migrate uh, towards the uh, in the vertical direction. Next type is the total migration. In total migration, the complete all the species in a group, uh, all the members in a group will migrate uh, from one place to the other. That is from the feeding ground to the breeding ground or the breeding to the feeding ground. They will move on the, all the species or all the members in a particular species will move from one place to the other. And it is uh, considered as the total migration because it is also called a complete migration of the particular species in one place to the another please. Next type of migration is the partial migration. Uh, partial migration, the name indicates only partial, only a part of the species, only a few members of the species will migrate. Uh, all the members of the groups of the birds do not uh, take part in this type of migration. Only a few members of the groups will migrate, uh, will taking part in this type of migration. Uh, for example, the Blue Jays of Canada and the northern part of the United States will travel southwards to blend with their sedentary population once they will migrate. Thus, they will blend with their sedentary population of the southern states of USA. So, the Blue Jays are the best example for uh, exhibiting the partial type of migration. 
only part of the members or part of the uh, in, uh, only few members of the groups will migrate in the partial migration next type of migration is the daily migration uh, some birds will migrate uh, daily uh, from their nesting ground nesting place to their uh, feeding ground and they will return back to their nest uh, regularly so this type of migration is uh, called as uh, daily migration uh, they make their uh, daily journey from their nest by the influence of various environmental factors uh, like uh, temperature light and even humidity and so it, this will induce the birds to migrate uh, regularly and for example crows uh, herons and starlings will migrate uh, daily they will migrate from their nest to, to the feeding ground and they will return back to their uh, nest uh, day, uh, daily a next type of uh, migration is uh, called a seasonal migration and it is contrast to the daily migration it will take place only seasonally uh, so some birds uh, migrate at a definite season of every year uh, for the purpose of uh, feeding or the breeding and this type of migration is called a seasonal migration because they will migrate only seasonally the influence of the various factors uh, some uh, example for this um, seasonal migrations or uh, cuckoos swift uh, swallows etc so they will uh, migrate only seasonally from one place to the other uh, for example they will migrate from south to the north during the summer and this type of migration is called a seasonal migration a uh, next one is the diurnal migration the in diurnal migration the migration will take place during the day time only hence it is called a diurnal migration the migration of the birds during the day time is called as diurnal migration so the many birds like uh, crows robins swallows hawks jays bluebirds pelicans cranes geese Uh, will migrate uh, during the day time for the searching of the food so this they exhibit a diurnal migration in contrast to this uh, nocturnal migrations are there in nocturnal migration the birds will migrate only during the night time they will not migrate in the day time uh, uh, the migration is called as this type of migration is called as a nocturnal migration Uh, for example some small sized birds of passer in group like the sparrows and warblers etc they will migrate in the darkness uh, so they are called nocturnal birds because uh, they need to escape from their enemies so they need some protection so for that purpose they will migrate uh, only during the night time by which they will protect uh, themselves from their enemies apart from this uh, some type of migrations are there uh, that is uh, climatic migration gametic migration and alimental migrations are there the climatic migration will be occur uh, due to the climatic change that is uh, there is a change in the environment and the migration will takes place so it occurs in response to their changes in the climatic condition of the environment the north south migration of uh, many ducks and geese is a best example for the climatic type of migration so when once the climate will change the migration will takes part in this type of birds and next is the gametic migration in some cases the gametes when the gonads mature it will induce a migration in birds so this type of migration is uh, referred as a gametic migration so it occurs in a need of certain environmental conditions for the successful completion of the some part of the reproductive process so they will exhibit this kind of migration so majority of birds will perform this type of migration when the gonads become mature they will migrate from their feeding ground to their breeding ground they will breed and they will return back to their feeding ground 
and this type of migration is called uh, gametic migration and next one is the alimental migration in alimental migration when there is a shortage of food or the water uh, the birds will migrate uh, for searching of the food and water to uh, to other places so due to the alimental effect they will migrate from one place to the other and this type of migration is called alimental migration so it may occur at any time in year years so you have understood something about the migration of birds their types of migration and the main causes of the migration everything and thank you for listening